Hello class. Today I want to take us through how do we plot a secant function and a cosecant function. Our goal is again to graph transforms secant and cosecant functions. If you came to class today what we did was we started out with a do now where we had you graph something that you knew how to graph already. If you look at the function, we could see that the amplitude was 2, the frequency value was 2, the phase angle was negative pi, and the midline was equal to negative 1. I specify graphing it on an interval from 0 to 2 pi, so we'll figure that out in a couple minutes. But what we want to first do is go back through the process of how we graph this uh, last week when we had our test on graphing transform sine and cosine functions. We're going to draw our midline. It's at negative 1. We're going to um, plot up two units for our amplitude and down two units for our amplitude. And this is y equals 1. Our midline was at y equals negative 1. And our um, lowest value or of the midline or from the amplitude was y equals negative 3. Now we need to figure out what our period is. And remember, our period is equal to 2 pi divided by our frequency value, which was the b value, which is 2. This means that our period is equal to pi. And our phase shift which is the amount our function starts at, is equal to the negative of our phase angle, which is negative c, divided by our frequency value, which was equal to 2. So our phase shift value is actually um, pi over 2. So on the midline, I'm going to mark our, our uh, tick marks. So I'm going to mark this to be pi over 2. That's where the function will be starting. I'll pick a position to the right, which will be my ending point, and that will be equal to, and that'll be where one cycle of the function ends, and that will be equal to our uh, phase shift plus a period. Now, from our work in the last class, or last week, we found out that our ending point should be 3 pi over 2. And now I'm just going to make even subdivisions so that I can draw my cosine function. So remember cosine, because it's a positive cosine function, it starts up high where the amplitude takes you to your maximum value, then it comes through the midline, and then it proceeds as follows. So remember to add in the concavity. And we have one cycle of our cosine function. Now if we wanted to draw um, more functions, we can just extend out the midline and we can just go to a position one full period beyond this, so I want to find another ending point. So my second ending point will be equal to my first ending point plus another pi radians. This would bring me to 5 pi over 2. So over here is 5 pi over 2, and I would just simply draw my tick marks in between, like we did last week, and continue on with the cycle. So this is what you would do to draw your function for more than one period. Now how do we take this and make our secant or cosecant function from this? Our secant function is exactly the same as our cosine function that we just drew. The cosine function we just drew was 2 cosine of 2x minus pi minus 1. Everything is the same except for the function. So what we want to do is we want to remember what the relationship is between the secant and cosine. Secant of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. So essentially what we're going to do is a graphical uh, flip. 
So if you want to plot the secant function, what you have to do first is plot its reciprocal. And then you have to um, do as we call it, uh, flip the function out. Now flipping the function out means if you look up on the if you look at the previous function we just drew, it means, and I'll draw it in um, blue ink, it means wherever there was a um, a point passing through the midline, we have an asymptote. And you basically just take the function and flip it up if it is, looks like it's in that orientation, or you flip it downward if it's at the lower part. And this is all you have to do to draw the secant function. So the function that is in blue is 2 secant of 2x minus pi minus 1. Hopefully that helps you. And when you go to draw your um, secant function, you'll use cosine. And when you have to draw your sine function, or sorry, cosecant function, you do the same strategy except you're working with the sine function. I hope this video has helped. Um, and again, um, when we come back to class tomorrow, we're going to be working in class on this for a few minutes, and I'll show you the solutions. Down below are the five homework problems that you would have to work. So as a tip, on the first one, you would have to graph first y equals 3 cosine of x minus pi. The second one, you would have to graph uh, 4 sine of 2x. On the third one, uh, y equals cosine of 3x plus pi, and so on. And remember to first, let me go up to the steps here, first plot sine or cosine the way we did last week and then you want to um, flip out your function that's all I have for you for today hopefully this helps and remember again your homework problems are these five problems from below take care and have a good night